reduce each fraction to lowest terms. We're going to look at several more complicated fractions here. And what I'd like you to observe is that as long as we take the process step by step, reducing these scary looking fractions to lowest terms isn't quite so bad. Let's get started with the first one. Our first fraction is 84 over 105. We want to reduce this fraction to lowest terms. To get started, I need to break down 84 and 105 using multiplication. Now, I don't remember 84 from my multiplication facts, but if I can find a number that I can divide into 84 without remainder, that will help me get started. 84 is an even number. It's a number divisible by 2. So if I go ahead and divide 84 by 2, 84 divided by 2, 2 goes into 8 4 times. 4 times 2 is 8. Subtract, I get 0. Bring down the 4. 2 goes into 4 twice. 2 times 2 is 4. Subtract, I get 0. Because I got zero remainder here on my division, I know that 2 times 42 is equal to 84. So let's go ahead and start breaking down 84 as 2 times 42. Now I want to think about breaking down the 105 down below. I know 2 won't go into 105 because 105 isn't even, so it's not going to do me any good to try dividing by 2. But I know another number that will go into 105. Because I have a 5 in the 1's place, I know 5 goes into 105. Let's go ahead and divide 105 by 5. And try doing that in your head, by the way. I'll write out the steps here, but it's good if you can make a guess about dividing 105 by 5 in your head. Let's see what we get if we write out the steps. 105 divided by 5, 5 goes into 10 twice. 2 times 5 is 10. Subtract, we get 0. Bring down the 5. 5 goes into 5 once. 1 times 5 is 5. Subtract, we get 0. So here I see that 5 goes into 105 21 times with no remainder. So 5 times 21 has to equal 105. We got that broken down as 5 times 21. Now let's keep going, breaking down the numbers above and below. By the way, I have to keep going because I don't see the same number above and below yet. Let's see where this takes us. I have 2, I recopy since it's prime, times 42. That I know is 6 times 7. 6 times 7 is 42. Down below, 5 is prime, times 21. 21 I can write as 3 times 7. And now I see I have a 7 that I can cancel above and below. Now is that all the canceling I can do? 2 I can't break down further. But the 6 above, the 6 above I can still break down. So let's keep going. I recopy the 2 up above times the 6 that I have, I can break down as 2 times 3. Down below, I have a 5. That's prime. Can't break it down further. Times a 3 that I also can't break down further. And now I see there's another number I can cancel. I can cancel a 3 above and below. Now at this point, it looks like I just have primes above, 2's above a prime below, that's 5 below. So there's no more canceling that I can do. I just go ahead and multiply back together the numbers that I have above. 2 times 2 is 4 over the 5 that I have below. There's my answer, 4 fifths. It's amazing that that complicated looking fraction has reduced to just 4 fifths. Let's add 4 fifths over here to our answer column. Are you ready to do another one now? Let's take a look at the second fraction. The second fraction we have to work with here 
is 117, 156. 117 over 156. And we need to try to break down the 117 above and the 156 below. Now 117, 117, I don't see any obvious way to break it down. Let's think about dividing numbers into it. Well, two won't go into it. 117 is not an even number. And like we did before with five, five won't go in here because 117 does not have a zero or five in the ones place. Those are the kinds of numbers that five goes into. What I could try is another prime number. How about three? Now, you can always just try dividing a number in to see if it goes, but there's also a little trick that works for three. If you add the digits together, seven plus one plus one, is 9. If you add the digits and get a number that 3 goes into, then 3 has to go into this original number. Well, 7 plus 1 plus 1 is 9. 3 goes into 9, so I know 3 will go into 117. Even if you don't know the trick, you can always just try and see if 3 will go in. 3 goes into 11. Let's see, 3 goes in 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. 11 minus 9 is 2. Bring down the 7. 3 goes into 27. That's 9 times. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 minus 27 is 0. So we got 3 going into 117 39 times. That means 3 times 39 is 117. Whew, got that one broken down. Now let's take a look at that 156. 156, uh, let's see, if I look at that one, I see a 6 in the ones place. I, I know that 2 will go into 156 because 156 is even. We could divide by 2. Let's go ahead and try that. 156 divided by 2. 2 goes into 15. 7 times 7 times 2 is 14. Subtract, we get 1. Bring down the 6. 2 goes into 16 8 times. 8 times 2 is 16. Subtract, I get 0. So 2 times 78 is going to be 156. Well, I don't see the same number above and below yet. Let's keep working on breaking this one down further. Up above, I got 3 times. That I'll recopy since 3 is prime. 39, can I break that down further? Now, 3 will also go into 39. I'm going to let you divide that out on your own. If you divide 3 into 39, you should get 13. That means 3 times 13 is 39. Down below, I have 2 times 78. Now, 78, I don't know from my times tables. It's not 9 times 8. 9 times 8 is 72. Close, but not good enough. It's an even number, so I could try dividing by 2 again. And again, I'm going to let you do the division by 2. When I divide 78 by 2, I'm going to get 39. So 2 times 39 is 78. Now I can kind of see where this is headed. I still don't have a number I can cancel above and below, but if I take this one step further, I'm going to recopy 3 times 3 times 13 up above. In fact, those are all primes. They can't be broken down further. Down below, I have 2 times 2 times the 39 I have below now, I can write as 3 times 13. And now there is some canceling to be done. A 13 above and below and a 3 above and below. That's all that I can cancel. I only have a 3 left above 
and I only have two twos below. So I go ahead and recopy the three above, multiply the twos below, two times two is four, and there, we did it. We got this tough one. We were able to redu reduce this fraction to three-fourths. 117 over 156 reduces to three-fourths. Well, we've gotten through two pretty complicated problems so far. Let's take a th look at our third fraction here. Our third fraction is 126 27ths. And let's start breaking these numbers down above and below. Uh, 126. Now, I, I know I can divide 126 by 2, but before we divide by 2, in fact, instead of dividing by 2, let's think of taking a chance with maybe trying to divide by a larger number. I know 6 goes into 12 and 6 goes into 6, so what if I tried dividing 126 by 6? Does 6 go into 126? Well, 6 goes into 12 twice. 2 times 6 is 12. Subtract, I get 0, bring down the 6. 6 goes into 6 once. Sure enough, when I subtract, I get 0 remainder. Any division that gives you 0 remainder gives you a way of breaking down that number inside the long division box. So we took a chance here, but sure enough, 6 times 21 is equal to 126. You don't have to take a chance if you don't want to. If you would have preferred to just divide by 2, or maybe divide by 3 or some other number, you can go in that direction also. But hey, I'm going to work with what I found here. Now down below, 27, that I know from my multiplication facts. That's 9 times 3. And while I don't see a number to cancel here yet, I can see that I'm definitely making progress. Let's keep breaking down the numbers above and below. 6 is 2 times 3, times 21 is 3 times 7, down below, 9 is 3 times 3, times, don't forget the 3 that we already have. We have two 3's coming from the 9 and a third 3 that was already there before. Now I can see some canceling to do. A 3 above with a 3 below. Another 3 above with another 3 below. It's 1 above with 1 below. I think that's all the canceling I can do here. Only a 2 and 7 above, only a 3 below. So what I have is the fraction 2 times 7 is 14 over 3. That's 14 thirds. Now that's a reduced fraction, but it's a special kind of reduced fraction. The number on top is larger than the number below. Sometimes we call that an improper fraction. This fraction represents a quantity that's more than one whole, and it can be rewritten as a mixed numeral. Sometimes it's okay if you leave an answer in this form, 14 thirds. But because it represents more than one whole, we often like to divide that out and write it as a mixed numeral. By that I mean 14 divided by 3. 3 goes into 14 four times. 4 times 3 is 12. Subtract, I get 2. I'm going to write that remainder 2 over the number out in front, the 3 in front. So I can rewrite 14 thirds as the mixed numeral 4 and 2 thirds. Some teachers prefer that you write your answer in this way while others prefer that you write 14 thirds. You should check with your own teacher to see which way she prefers. Over here now, I'm going to recopy my answers. 14 thirds, or you could write that as 4 and 2 thirds.
Well, we've got three down and one to go. We have one more fraction to reduce in this group of fractions. And the last one is 7,700 11 thousandths. It looks like a monster, but actually it's not going to be that bad at all. 7,700 over 11,000. One reason it's not going to be that bad is all these zeros that are on the end. We have zeros in the ones and tens place for both the numerator and the denominator. When I have a zero on the end of a number, I can always think of that number as 10 times something. I'm only going to work with one zero at a time here. If I cover up one zero in 7,700, I see 770. That helps me see that 770 times 10 is equal to 7,700. If I cover up one zero on the 11,000, I see 1100. 1100 zero times 10, which is the same as saying 1100 times 10, is equal to 11,000. I can now cancel a 10 above and below. Sometimes people cancel tens above and below by using a shortcut method where they just cross out one zero on the end above and below. That would be just fine if you, you used the shortcut method. Now let's continue. We still have zeros on the end above and below. So the 770 I can write as 77 times 10. The 1100 down below, I can write as 110 or 110 times 10. There's another factor of 10 that I can cancel above and below. And this is the same, if you wanted to use a shortcut, this is the same as crossing out a second zero above and below in the original fraction. Now I still have a zero below but I can't cancel any more zeros because I've run out of zeros up above. Well, I'm not worried about those zeros because we're almost through with the reducing here. Up above, 77 is 7 times 11. Down below, 110 is 11 times 10. Now I see that I can cancel an 11 above and below. That leaves me with 7 above, 10 below. Now, I could still break down that 10 below, but I'm only going to get a 2 and a 5 out of it. There's no way to break down the 7. I can see at this point that there's no more canceling I'm going to be able to do. If you're certain there's no more canceling to do, you don't need to break down that 10 further. I'm left with the fraction 7 over 10 which is in reduced form. And that really wasn't so bad, reducing that 7,700 over 11,000. Our answer for that one is 7 tenths. And we got it. We got all four of these fractions reduced to lowest terms.